after two playthroughs of the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, I definitely have some thoughts about it. It's not great. Firstly, MW3's campaign is short. Very short. My first playthrough, including many deaths and some exploration, took just over four hours, with my second playthrough clocking in at around three and a half hours. As someone who usually buys COD for the campaigns, and looks forward to them specifically every year, I was really disappointed that it was over so quickly. Black Ops Cold War's campaign was around the same length, definitely a tad longer, but that campaign had so much going for it and so many interesting ideas at play that in my opinion made up for its short length. MW3 however, I don't think I can say the same about. Honestly, it does bring forth some interesting concepts. Open combat missions on paper are a great idea and absolutely make sense to incorporate into Call of Duty. However, the execution here just isn't handled very well. I think they could have been a lot more interesting if the locations of these missions were unique, but nearly all of them we've seen before. Pieces of Verdansk are used all over MW3's campaign, so it removed much of what, to me, made older COD campaigns so interesting. Mission variety, new locations we've never seen before. COD is known for its epic set pieces and blockbuster action moments, and honestly, that was missing from a lot of this campaign. That said, I do honestly respect the attempt at innovation, and that's where my sympathy for Sledgehammer games comes in. COD's the same every year. Sledgehammer makes Advanced Warfare. A lot of people hate it. Though, now folks are starting to reminisce and give it some well-deserved respect. But then afterwards, everybody wants boots on the ground again. Go back to the roots. So, Sledgehammer delivers World War II. Everybody shits on it for being cookie cutter, nothing special. Vanguard, we just don't talk about. And then MW3, the very same people complaining that the COD campaign formula is getting tiresome and uninspired, are now complaining about open combat missions, saying that it doesn't feel like a COD campaign and prefer the same formula they've been complaining about for years. I'm not trying to make excuses for the lackluster MW3 campaign, because it was disappointing and I'll get into that a bit more, but I do applaud Sledgehammer for being pretty much the only current COD developer that is at least trying to do something different, for better or for worse. I think these open combat missions would have been really cool if 1. the maps were something we've never seen before, and 2. if they didn't make up more than half of the playable campaign, and I think both of those ultimately boil down to Activision's complete refusal to give COD devs some time time to work on their games. Immediately upon starting MW3's campaign, it's very clear that it was rushed. And I'm not surprised. I mean, imagine the shock Sledgehammer games got when they were originally told that there would be no premium release for 2023, and instead the focus was going to be on year 2 content for MW2. Just to be told, psych. MW3 was supposed to be a DLC for MW2, and the campaign makes that pretty clear. My guess is that the missions and their layouts were there from the start as a continuation of MW2 for the purpose of a DLC, but once the devs were told it was going to be a premium release that of course a lot more people are going to end up playing the campaign, they probably had to go hastily rewrite a bunch of stuff, raise the stakes, and figure out how to throw it into what was already there. To me, that would explain how rushed this entire campaign feels. Even with the freedom of the open combat missions, every single mission feels so, so short. I remember the day before the campaign went live, I saw a list of every single mission in the campaign and was pretty pleased to see 14 missions there. To compare, Modern Warfare 2019 also had 14 missions, with the average playthrough clocking in at around 5-6 to six hours with last year's MW2 taking me around six and a half hours to complete. I was really looking forward to a similar runtime, and I was especially excited to see what havoc Makarov could wreak on the world within that time frame. Unfortunately though, even in the three to four hours of MW3, Makarov doesn't really do anything. He's busted out of Verdansk prison, and then later on, we revisit Verdansk Stadium in a flashback where Makarov has unleashed an admittedly brutal and horrifying terrorist attack. Then this game's version of No Russian comes around, where Makarov's goons hijack a plane and forcefully frame a former ULF soldier named Samara to carry out the attack by strapping a bomb to her chest. This mission is actually only playable for maybe 15 seconds, the rest is a cutscene that lasts maybe another 2 or 3 minutes before it's done. Just like that. And then we don't really see Makarov again until the very end, where, big spoiler, he emerges from the shadows, pops one in Soap's head, and the game ends. I really liked this new version of Soap, but I was surprised by how little I cared about his death. I tried to care, I really did, you can see it on my face, because admittedly it did catch me off guard. 
but more than the fact that Soap had just been killed, I was shocked by how quickly it happened and how little the other characters reacted. I get it, he was killed in the middle of disarming a bomb that could wipe out hundreds of innocent people, and there's still Coney Group mercenaries firing at everybody, so yeah, finish the job and then mourn, uh, but there was really no sense of grief. We get a quick cutscene of Soap's ashes being tossed from a cliff, and then that's it. I honestly think if Soap's death was handled better and not so rushed, this short little cutscene would have hit very hard because it is a beautiful cutscene, thematically, contextually, and visually, but the moments that came before it just happened so fast that it was really hard to care. However, with all of these negatives, there are still some positives that stand out. The acting in MW3 is fantastic. Everybody nailed it, and I'm shocked by how much I love this very same group of characters I grew up with, looking and sounding pretty different than my childhood. The cast of the new Modern Warfare games is solid, and remains so in this game. Now, maybe an unpopular opinion, but I actually really liked what they did with Makarov. Sure, he doesn't look quite as menacing as he did in the original trilogy, but I like how they fleshed his character out a little bit more this time around, even within the constraints of a less than 4 hour experience. This new version of Makarov has a Russian accent, and speaks Russian, because he is Russian, so in that regard it makes Makarov seem a little bit more believable, or as believable as a character like Makarov can get. And overall, I thought his actor did a wonderful job. The game clearly established through cutscenes and even the Verdansk mission that this guy is just as brutal and dangerous as he was back in the original Modern Warfare series. I honestly think it was Makarov that saved the story for me. Modern Warfare 3's campaign is a little disorganized and full of things that don't really make a ton of sense, but anytime Makarov was on screen, he pulled me back into the game. That said, I don't think the story itself is as bad as many on the internet are claiming it is. It's by no means a massive dumpster fire. It's just rushed. It feels like filler, the calm before the storm, which is not what I was expecting. I thought I'd get to see a different spin on the Eiffel Tower crumbling before my eyes, but no, it seems like that will be reserved for Task Force 141's next outing, whether that be another $100 game or a campaign add-on for the current one. And yes, AAA games cost usually just over $100 after tax here in Canada, so if you're complaining about a $70 DLC, be thankful you're not Canadian. Anyway, MW3's campaign does bring some interesting new concepts and a very convincing reimagining of Makarov, but the campaign itself suffers greatly from a lack of development time. Thanks, Activision! Very little mission variety, very little time to be spent in the actual game, and very little reasons to play it at all beyond maybe a couple standout missions that are just fun to play or genuinely brutal enough to make you care about what you're doing, make MW3 an incredibly disappointing installment to a reboot that I've truthfully enjoyed a lot over the past two games. Hopefully next time we'll cross the 4 hour mark, get to see Alejandro and Rudy again, and maybe, just maybe, get to see Price spark up a cigar after defeating Makarov, who has just flattened most of the West.